what is poppin so squad i'm back with another video to make your life better so today 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 don't mind the hair it's definitely not fleeky um i got a lot going on right now and we got so much to talk about you guys it's literally nuts so before we get into this video i got some um as you guys can tell i got some fufu um i got it with steak um now i'm literally kind of kicking myself because before this african food stuff became a trend i have so many african friends you guys because where i where like one of the cities that i'm from like where i just moved from where my mom lives and stuff um there's a lot of you know west african people there and basically um they come from like ghana uh togo benin places like that i remember i, I well i love white rice and so let me just let me take a thumbnail real quick and we can get into that so ooh, i'm gonna hold this up so uh her name was bb and i love white rice and so um basically i'm gonna go ahead and open up these i got three different juices i got a mango juice i don't know i just put juice in there and then i got this mixed fruit juice and then i got pineapple juice so i'll probably be saving this pineapple juice for later i love pineapple juice already so um i want to try these two so why don't we get into that while i'm talking anyway so i love white rice but i could never cook it i didn't have a rice cooker and basically um I had this neighbor from Togo, her name was Bibi, and she used to make me rice. So, mm -hmm. grab them. My best friend's daughter, so. This is good. It tastes a lot like mango. Um, I want her to also try some as well. And then, um, this mixed fruit one I'm gonna try. So she used to make me rice all the time. Or whatever and i just met a lot of people that were from here because where i'm from you know african people and black americans don't really get along too well they don't really like each other and that is good but i'm not gonna drink it because that's too it's too thick it's too thick for me to drink with my food um th but this one's actually really good the mango one's decent um but back to what i was saying so i met a lot of people from there so i've tried african food before so it's not like this is my first time like a lot of the other uh youtubers but i always said like to my um cousin home motherfucking banks you know people say i'm like i need one of my friends to make me some fufu because i actually like fufu and or some achike or however you say it just something that i actually like and i wanted to eat it on my channel now i'm gonna put some of this on here now i always said that i was gonna do it i always said i was gonna do it and i'm kicking myself because i waited too long because now it's like a trend so i was like i have to do it um i got this from this place um they're like i believe the people are from like somalia who made this so i'm not sure it's gonna taste the same because it definitely doesn't look the same and it doesn't smell the same it doesn't feel the same as a fufu that i've tried before okay so let's try it now a lot of people are eating with their hands i wouldn't do that too just as just out of like respect i did already previously wash my hands before i started eating or set all this stuff up um so let's go ahead i'm a little nervous though because like i said it doesn't feel nearly it doesn't feel it doesn't smell the same as the fufu that i've tried before so ooh, it's hot though definitely hot so I'm gonna eat it with just some of these greens first. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste it doesn't taste quite the same either though. But how's everybody doing today? I hope every everybody is doing good. One thing too I've noticed in like YouTubers is like when they eat with their hands. So when you eat with your hands from another country at least 
my friends, I don't know if it's in every country, but my friends, they inform me that when you eat with your hands, they do it <clears throat> because they want to like really taste the food, you know, and you're not supposed to use both of your hands. And a lot of YouTubers, they do. Um... A lot of the YouTubers are using like both of their hands, but you're only supposed to use your right hand. You're not supposed to use your left hand because it's like considered like dirty or whatever. I don't know exactly why. Mm. These are really big pieces of meat. Mmm. -mm. But the steak is pretty good. I got one with chicken and one with steak. They also serve it with goat. I've had goat before too. It tastes kind of like steak. It's pretty good. I'm getting a phone call right now. Sorry about that, guys. Somebody called me. So I got something I want to talk about. Um, but before we get into that, I do want to let you guys know, I do apologize for my last video. I'm very upset that there was no sound because we talked about a lot. I do know I was supposed to be doing like a giveaway talent show thing. Um, you guys just got to bear with me on that because after I lost my grandpa, I was, I was just not at work for like two weeks straight. Um, and then I ended up coming home from my mom's house. And now I'm getting my stuff together because I'm about to move back. So I have a lot of stuff going on and a lot of different things, a lot of different boulders or whatever. And so once I get settled in and everything, we'll definitely get back on track and, you know, all that good stuff. Also, you guys know I work full time and now I'm going to school full time as well. So just bear with me. I'm trying to get like a small piece of meat so I can just get it all in one. But it's this meat is so big. So what I'll do is this. So it's definitely good. But it's not nearly as good as the fufu that I had from one of my friends. And when I move back, I'm going to make him make me some just so I could do another video. And I promise you when I do that video, y'all going to see me not even talking. It's so good. I don't know if it's because it's like two different countries or whatever, but... The meat was kind of tough, but um, it was definitely fire. I mean, this was the only restaurant I could find that had fufu food food. here, anyway, in Omaha. So, if you guys know of another one, definitely let me know. So, there's this um. There's a story I'm going to tell you guys about this man who killed his family twice, okay? And his name is Gregory Green. Now, I have previously, you know, heard of the story a little bit. But not really in depth or anything. And this was a while ago. Well, I recently stumbled across it again from a girl YouTuber by the name of Christina Randall or something like that. Christine Randall, Christina Randall. <coughs> I actually ended up subscribing to her channel because she's really like 
she's, she could tell her she could tell some stories man she could, she's really good at telling stories and naya hold on one yeah. second. come here my best friend's daughter i'm gonna have her try this juice anyway so she's great at telling stories you know she's great at what she does and she was talking about this specific story and i stumbled across her video as well and she definitely told it like way more in depth than what i've ever heard it before here come over here and try this tell me if you like it and so basically she went into detail so i want to break it down for you guys too because just in case you guys never heard of the story <coughs> and i think it's literally nuts and i really would like to see like a documentary she said the same thing you like it you want the rest of it here you go and so um mm -hmm. she eating mcdonald's so um because i'm moving so i don't want to cook i just packed up all my dishes so girls getting her shit together anyway excuse me so i'm gonna i'm gonna bring the chicken one up here so i could try that um basically is this guy named gregory green he has um he ends up having a wife you know and falling in love with um his wife now he ends up getting her pregnant and she's about to have a baby um i'm not gonna guys i'm not gonna tell you guys everything in detail because i don't remember fully everything but i remember after seeing that, i was like i want to talk about this and i also read up on it too and i really would like to see a documentary on it too not just because i'm a weirdo and i and i like see stuff like that it's just fascinating to me not in a way to like say like death is i'm not saying it like in a mean way but you know when i was very very young i read about jeffrey dahmer because it was just fascinating like who would do that like you never would you would never think somebody could do that so when people who do that then you definitely want to know more is basically how it is with me anyway this was not packaged very well a lot of it fell out in the bag and it's everywhere Anyway, so he ends up getting her pregnant. They're expecting to have a baby. And, excuse me, she winds up dead. I guess she had like filed for a divorce or something. And like two days, I think it was two days or like two months, but I'm pretty sure it was like two days, they said. After she filed for a divorce, she he he murdered her he like stabbed her to death while she was pregnant with their child okay this is nuts now after they um after he kills her and her her unborn baby he calls the cops and goes to sit outside and waits for them now that that right there shows you that he's he's nuts that's somebody you don't want to mess with okay i'm just mixing up this for because it's kind of hard um basically yeah that's that's crazy so while he's in prison now now i believe that while he was like before he went to prison he had like um a church family already like you know i don't know if he like grew up and was going there or what the details were because honestly i don't remember all that i'm not one of them but hey i'm trying my best <laughs> basically yeah, so he had, like, either a church family that, from when he was a child or whatever. They don't know too much about his childhood. I don't know when the church family came into play, but he had a church family. Um, after he killed his wife and his child, he goes to prison. Now, I believe she said he was in prison... And he tried to go in front of the parole board like five times and got denied. And in the mix of all that, the pastor from his church is coming up there trying to help him get out as well, as long as what family members and everything else. Now, this pastor really believed that, you know, you change your life, you turn to Christ, you know, you'll be fixed, you, you'll get your stuff together. I think he was some form of an activist. I can't remember exactly what kind of activist he was. But I know he did try to get, you know, people from, you know, out of prison to change their life, you know, whatever. Which is great. Now, 
in the meantime the pastor is also writing like statements to the pro board like he's changed he's a changed man you know whatever and i think he said we were friends before his mishap um i, I just remember him saying like he, we were friends before his mishap and he's a changed man or whatever now I'm not trying to look like a pig, but I might just have to eat it with this work. Anyway, so <coughs> excuse me. We're friends with friends, Mr. Hap, and he's a changed man. He's, you know, he believe he he believes that Gregory deserves a second chance. So, you know, the pro board people, they basically, they ask the guards, like, was he, you know, was he a good inmate? You know, whatever. They say he was like a, a really good inmate. He was, you know, on his stuff. He didn't get into fights. He got into one altercation one time, like, over the TV. And it wasn't like nothing like gang violence or anything like that. He was just over the TV, whatever. So, he was like, he was a really good inmate. He did what he had to do. You know, he was a star inmate. And basically, um, the pro board was like, fine. We'll give him another chance. So, they do. Now, when he gets out, he's doing really good. He's going back to church. He's getting his stuff together. This chicken is actually pretty good. Um, he's getting his stuff together. You know? Um, he, you know how, like, after church, y'all go out to eat? Go to Corral, maybe, um, a, a Mexican spot, wherever. And, um, he was doing that. And there was this lady who had, I believe she had a son. And so he went out. With her after church, had church dinner all the time. I guess her son grew attached to Greg, and ooh, her son grew attached to Greg, and she grew attached to him, and they was really hitting it off. And she was like, I want to start seeing you more, or whatever. And Greg's like, Sure, I'm down, shorty, you know what I'm saying? She clapped them cheeks. Anyway, the point is. They start dating, and then a few years or whatever down the line, whatever. I don't know if it's years or months. I don't know about all that, but they end up getting married and having, I believe, three kids of their own. And to make the long story short, basically, Shorty that he done got married to now is the pastor's daughter. Okay. Now, basically... The pastor's daughter falls in love with this man. She knows about his past. She's accepting him. Whatever have you. And like I said, they have three kids together. Now, by the time the two oldest, because like her her previous kid now, remind, I'm going to remind you, she has a previous child. They have three kids. Their oldest two are like teenagers by this time. And by the time she starts getting like, by the time they're teenagers, I guess is what I'm saying. He starts showing like red flag signs. Greg is like acting a damn fool. When he mad, he trying to boss up on shorty, you know, whatever. And it's scaring her a little bit. So I believe they said she filed for a divorce as well. Y'all, um, I'm not going to cap. I do not like this fufu. The meat is good, but I don't really fool with the fufu and I'm getting full. So, yeah, I'm about to figure it out. And I'm not going to waste all this food. I'm going to figure out something to do with it because the chicken is fine. 
Maybe I can. I wish I knew how to make my own. Anyway, let's get back to the story. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm already getting. I'm already kind of full. I don't know why. But I think it's because. I haven't been drinking pop for the last, I don't know how long, and I had like two pops today and a wine cooler, so I'm a little bloated, I guess. Anyway, back to the situation. I'm such a horrible storyteller today. I don't know why my mind's going everywhere, <coughs> but basically... So she, he's bossing up on her, whatever. She feels some type of way. So she goes and she files for a divorce. After she files for the divorce, she never falls back up with it. So they kind of just like wave it off. Like, okay, you, if you file for a divorce, you're going to have to continue to do steps or it's not, you're not going to just be able to get a divorce. So some months go by at this point. I believe, yeah, I believe she done moved out, uh, or went somewhere and, um, I believe it's like two months go by or so, whatever, a couple months go by. And he's like, hey, babe, you know, that I, I'm so sorry I acted like that. Like, that was not good of me. And I guess he was doing it when the kids was around. So, like, he was kind of scaring the kids, too. So, he was like, you know, I'm sorry, babe, you know, whatever. I'm going to change. I don't know what got into me. I think I was just having, like, you know, I was just under pressure, whatever. And that's no excuse, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And they get back together. So they moved back in together and very, very shortly after that time, she goes to file for a divorce for the second time. Like again, she goes back and files for another divorce. But this time she didn't move out. I think uh, it was probably like, I'm not sure why she didn't move out, honestly. Like the lady that I told you guys, I watched her video, the Christine girl, Christina Randall, I should probably figure it out. I'll leave her description or her channel in the description i believe she was like well maybe she um had all the kids and she just felt like you know it wasn't that serious she kind of didn't really have nowhere to go whatever i don't know what the case might have been but if i know that you already murdered your whole family before me as a woman of who i am i know for a fact just being me in general um i don't really care about Forgive and forget whatever. I know people in the hood, they get killed all the time. But that's not really the same as you murdering your family at all. That, I'm automatically not even going to talk to you. Like, don't, I don't, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Don't, whatever. But if for some reason, I get with a man like this and we have kids together, you know, and I love him and he's acting crazy. I'm going to be scared for my life. If you boss up on me like that. I'm definitely not going to provoke you like I would a normal other hu human being. Like, you try to boss up on me. Okay, I can boss up on you. I'll get my brothers. You know, I'll get a lamp. I'll hit you outside. You know, whatever. But this man is literally insane. He waited for the cops, bro. That means he ain't in, he's not in his right mind. I feel like he's, something is off in there. So, I'm going to be like, okay, you know, whatever. And as soon as I get the chance, I'm dipping. And if I, if I file for a divorce, I'm not coming back. You're not seeing me. I don't care. My baby's going out the way today. Oh, no, if they want to see their daddy, that's fine. You know, they can talk to him over the phone, chit chat, video chat. I don't care. But you're not coming around me, period. Because you're not going to, no. Anyway, but I can't judge her, though, because, like, some people, they don't think like that. Some people are more vulnerable. You never know what this woman might have went through. You don't know what he might have said to her either. So, but I'm just me keeping it real, though. She, sh she should have saw this coming, and it's a shame that she didn't or she didn't feel like or he might have made her feel like it wasn't coming, whatever the case may be. It's a shame because what ends up happening is okay she so after she files for a divorce for the second time she didn't move out i don't know why but she just she didn't move out i don't i i don't i don't know maybe he was a whole different person i i don't know um one day he goes crazy okay and he takes his wife downstairs in the basement he zips he zip ties her duct tapes her to a chair he takes a knife and he like slits her everywhere. He had like slits going from like her her ears to her to her chin to her mouth. I don't know whatever. But she had she had like scars from her from him slitting her face. He also shot her in the foot. 
And that right there shows he wanted to torture this woman because he was angry and he was mad about something. I don't know what it might have been either, but he was he he wanted to hurt her. He wanted to hurt her. He did if he if he if he didn't want to hurt her or make her feel like if there was not hatred there, he would have killed her. That's how I feel about it. Because you done cut this woman, sliced her up. I mean, her face and everything, you guys. Deep cuts. Okay? It's still scars there. You done shot her in the foot after you done tied her and gagged her and all this stuff. And then he goes upstairs. He takes their two little small children, the smallest children. He puts them in a car with the little thing um the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide whatever it's called like he he wired it up to where it would like go back into the car y'all know how like in the movies they kill themselves by like breathing in the uh carbon dioxide or whatever from their car he did that with their two smallest kids which is so sad it's so sickening it's disgusting okay now after he puts them in the car he takes the two oldest ones downstairs in the basement with their mom and he just shoots them. I, I think she said like execute. I, I think it was like execution style. That's what it's called. She said it. Um, I read somewhere else that said the same thing. So I'm I'm thinking that that he probably like shot them right in the back of the head or whatever. You know how they do that. I don't, I hope I don't get my video taken out because I'm talking about this. I don't know how I'm supposed to say. It. I'm just saying it the way I'm telling the story like I normally would. I don't know. But anyway so he does this to their oldest two children and then after that he goes back outside on the porch and he calls the cops and waits for them to come so he's nuts okay and i feel like oh my god it's so crazy because this whole time your dad helped this man get out of prison because he believed in him and he turned around and he killed your whole family now he didn't kill the wife um he could have, but I feel like, like I said, I feel like it was hatred. Excuse me. I feel like it was something there that he, I, he wanted to show her less. I don't know what it was, but it's super sickening and a super, super sad. And there's not like, I'm, I'm sure that like, oh my God, I can just imagine how the pastor is feeling. Like, I, I definitely, I, I don't know what, I'm sure he's hurt bad. Um, along with, you know, his wife. His wife, she was actually, like, she was pretty. She, she doesn't, she didn't look like she was, like, one of those who have really been in too many relationships either. So, I can see kind of, like, where she might have stayed. It's a lot of women out there that's like that. Like, even if she felt threatened or whatever, Maybe she still stayed because maybe she just thought maybe like he, I don't know. Maybe she figured, you know, she was different. He would change or whatever have you. And that just wasn't the case. So my thing on why I would like to see like some form of like a documentary or something is because nobody really knows a lot about his childhood at all. And so I want to kind of know like what his childhood was like because usually you know a lot of serial killers or because technically i don't know if that would be considered a serial killer or not but i would think so because that's technically what four five six people he done killed so um but usually people who murder people like that they have some type of like something wrong mentally and there's something that they might have done as a child that might have been like a red flag to like so like this boy ain't right you know when he gets older some stuff might happen like you know people k killing their pets or you know other animals and stuff like that and like you know y'all know how serial killers are i don't really have to go into detail on that so um i just kind of want to know more about that and then i also want to know more about like what he was saying to her like why did she not leave like she did the first time why did she stay like what just how maybe he was it just see how he talks or something like maybe he was persuasive maybe he was you know just one of them he could say anything and people believe it you know you never know so i definitely want to talk about that um good job maya yeah on a on another note like on a good type of term thing i guess i don't know 
I'm super tired, y'all. If y'all can't tell already. Um, basically, yeah, I'm moving. Hopefully, back to where my mom and people lives. I'm in the process of trying to transfer my job there because they have one there. Um, and just in the process of packing my stuff. Now, I do plan to move on Monday. Today is currently Wednesday, and you guys probably will not see this till Thursday or Friday. I do apologize for me not, like, you know, posting the way I should be posting or whatever. But, um, I'm definitely going to get it together. I mean, I always say this, but I, I'm i definitely going to get it together. I just need some time. I just keep getting some, like, you know, bumps in the roads. And I do apologize for the little breaks I'll be taking and this and that. Because I really seriously do miss talking, like to you guys i feel like i can get everything out i feel like i could really just talk to someone vent whatever it's just i'm super super busy with everything constantly so it's so hard like i know people say well you gotta eat every day but you know not every day you're wanting to cook and then after you get a cooking you know set up because you just got off work you got to start school work whatever you don't want to set up you know or maybe you just don't, you're not in the mood to talk. Or sometimes I don't even, sometimes I'll go all day without eating and I'll finally eat at nighttime and I'm smashing. So, you never know. My lifestyle's kind of busy. But I do want to thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye.